My voice is clear. Okay, uh, hello everyone and welcome uh, to this uh, online online uh, webinar of uh, integrated asset modeling, uh, uh, specifically highlighting the production system optimization. Uh, I'm Hisham Mukhtar Ali, uh, senior reservoir engineer from Egypt. So, uh, <clears throat> and shortly in this webinar, <clears throat> We will highlight uh, very quickly the an overview of uh, the integrated production system from uh, and its all components from the reservoir, uh, well bore, and well completion to the uh, surface uh, network. And then uh, we uh, highlight in details uh, an overview regarding the uh, material balance applications and the uh, uh, its uh, diagnostic tools. And then uh, the uh, well modeling process and uh, the uh, uh, why it's very important to have uh, valid well models to uh, uh, to uh, evaluate the uh, well's performance and design the artificial lift and so on. And finally, an overview of uh, uh, the surface uh, network and the processing facilities as an integrated uh, production system optimization. So uh, starting directly uh, with uh, our agenda in this uh, in this uh, session, uh, starting as introduction overview of the production system, material balance uh, principles and applications, and uh, recommended workflow. Then um, the uh, common before the common uh, uh, limitations of material balance analysis. And then uh, the definition and application of the nodal analysis and um, uh, defining the pressure losses across the production system. And then uh, why well modeling is uh, uh, critical for the integrated production system and the optimization. Uh, and then we have a surface network modeling overview. Finally, uh, we have uh, a field application of uh, uh, optimization process. So uh, starting uh, uh, with a very traditional overview, which is the uh, segments so and um, of the oil and gas industry, as you know, uh, we have three main segments of uh, the upstream, which is concerned with the uh, exploration and extraction of uh, oil and gas uh, assets. Uh, so we have uh, exploration and production, um, which means we have uh, full reservoir uh, modeling, geological modeling and uh, production processing production facility uh, and and so on the next phase or next stage is the uh, midstream which is the uh, transportation and um, trading of oil and gas uh, 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 products from the oil and gas fields and then we have the downstream which is uh, typically related to refining uh, and marketing and then use of products so this is the uh, cycle of the oil and gas industry so uh, for upstream or the uh, integrated production uh, system, we uh, typically concerned with the uh, this part of the uh, cycle or this part of the uh, 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 or this segment of the industry, which is the uh, the uh, exploration and production, and then uh, how to optimize the uh, production of the oil and gas assets by. Uh, optimizing the uh, uh, wells uh, uh, and uh, surface network and the processing facilities. So uh, to go uh, more details, uh, focus on the production system, as you can see. So uh, we have uh, three major uh, parts of this segment of this system. Uh, and the uh, down hole or the uh, subsurface, we have the reservoir part, which is the, uh, we have fluid flow in a porous media. Or the uh, the uh, reservoir itself, uh, then the fluid will uh, uh, will go through across the uh, completion, as you can see. So the uh, set of wells may be uh, naturally flowing wells, uh, other wells may be artificially lifted wells, like uh, ESP uh, pumps, gas lifting, sucker wood bombing system, and so on. Then the uh, the uh, uh, produce the flow, so uh, well stream will be uh, uh, connected together at this production uh, manifold. As you can see, then we have uh, some uh, production uh, uh, pipeline or uh, flow line, as you can see, followed by the uh, the separation uh, 
uh, uh, uh, unit of oil and gas uh, and gas separators. The terminals and outlets of the separator, as you know, we have the uh, water, maybe water uh, directed to water disposal or water, inject uh, water injection. And uh, what's very important for us is the uh, produced oil is uh, maybe directed to uh, further processing steps uh, and finally to storage tanks and maybe to uh, an oil uh, uh, export, uh, exportation or transportation uh, facility like transportation pipeline and so on. For the uh, gas, uh, uh, gas may be directed to gas uh, pipelines or uh, can uh, this gas can be used for gas injection or gas uh, 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 field applications like uh, uh, power generation in the uh, field facilities and so on. So um, we have three main parts, as mentioned, float flow in the post media, float flow through well pool and uh, production tubing or the completion string, and the flow uh, through the surface uh, pipelines and uh, uh, surface network, including the uh, some restriction and uh, the production manifold, as you can see, and then to uh, the uh, separator uh, pressure. So uh, the uh, two common points in the system, uh, the first ever point is the average reservoir pressure uh, at the bottom uh, at subsurface. And on the uh, surface network, the separator pressure is the uh, second and most important uh, factor that controls the, the optimization of the production system. So um, the uh, main principles and applications for the uh, integrated production uh, system or integrated production modeling. So starting from the subsurface part, as you can see, this is the uh, 3D representation of the production system. So in the uh, porous media, we have load flow across the porous spaces. Therefore, Darcy's law of flow rate equation must be applied to characterize the flow uh, movement through this uh, uh, porous media. The second principle is the continuity equation or the uh, material balance equation, which means the, uh, the uh, uh, remaining volume at specific time will be the initial volume of stoib minus the produced volume of the cumulative production. The uh, third uh, concept is the uh, BBT properties or equation of a state model. Uh, that means uh, as the flow the properties like oil density, oil viscosity, oil formation, volume factor, and so on, all of them are functions of uh, pressure. Therefore, as the pressure declines from the average uh, reservoir pressure, as you can see, PR to bottom of long pressure, BWF, then to wellhead pressure, uh, and so on. So uh, the flow properties must be characterized as a function of pressure. Uh, so the equation of the state model will be applied to uh, define flow properties at different uh, conditions. Uh, next model is the uh, the inflow performance or the uh, or the inflow performance model IBR or the uh, the model that defines the well capability or reservoir capability or the productivity index of this um, of this well. It's a function of the uh, drawdown and the production rate. And the last mo uh, model is the uh, VLB or outflow or vertical lift performance model which is the function of the capability of the uh, completion string to uh, to transfer fluids from the bottom of the well to the uh, uh, well head and and uh, next uh, the uh, the production system so uh, this is the uh, major parts of the production system as you can see starting from the average reservoir pressure as mentioned and uh, uh, last point is the uh, separator pressure and so on. So uh, the, uh, as you know, the um, widely used uh, nodal analysis assembly, we have uh, two curves to define the uh, system parts, uh, uh, to define the operating point or the operating conditions of this system. So uh, assembly, we have uh, a relationship between uh, pressure on Y axis against the flow rate. So uh, the uh, reservoir, um, Capability of production is defined by the inflow performance relationship, this curve, and the um, the uh, capability of the production, uh, the completion string uh, to transmit and uh, flow it, uh, is uh, defined by this outflow performance curve, and the, the intersection between these two curves is the uh, the system operating point, operating pressure, and uh, operating uh, flow rate. 
So uh, as an uh, overview of the production system, as you can see, and as mentioned, uh, the uh, subsurface part is the uh, reservoir defined by specific reservoir properties, uh, typically reservoir porosity, uh, mobility, uh, saturations, and so on. As a uh, 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 rock physics related, like relative mobility, capillary pressure, and the fluid properties, another important uh, uh, part of the uh, to define the reservoir characteristics. Also, uh, a reservoir energy or a reservoir driving mechanism. It's another important factor related to the uh, reservoir. Uh, reservoir volume of storage, uh, the uh, also uh, different uh, energy sources like uh, uh, maybe water injection or water influx or gas injection or gas cap uh, production and so on. Uh, next part of the system is the uh, completion start. Uh, completion starting at uh, the sand face. We have this. Uh, uh, perforation based on specific perforation design, and then the tubing string uh, or the uh, completion string set of uh, valves to control the uh, uh, fluids across this production tubing. And uh, right here, we may have sub uh, surface controlled subsurface safety valve. And on surface, we have the shock manifold to control the production of the well. Uh, followed by the uh, flow line or pipelines to transmit uh, fluids from the uh, uh, choke uh, or the wellhead to uh, uh, further uh, uh, to the next step. In this case, we have an offshore field. So we have a uh, riser uh, then to the uh, separator and the terminals of separator may be a uh, uh, pump to uh, transmit um, or transfer this fluid or liquid to uh, the exportation um, uh, export uh, pipelines and gas. Uh, uh, we may have uh, some uh, gas uh, compressors to uh, to uh, uh, to increase uh, the pressure of this uh, gas uh, outlet. So, uh, second about uh, the uh, completion, which is function of the inflow of productivity index of this well. Also, uh, completion efficiency, specifically the uh, uh, skin damage, or um, uh, maybe we have uh, hydraulic fracturing or stimulation operation, and so on. Uh, next step is to uh, related to the uh, completion or production tubing uh, defined by the uh, outflow or vertical lift performance. So, uh, its function also as the completion design. Also, the gravity and the friction of this fluid in the production tubing, and also the uh, uh, artificial lift design and the artificial lift system optimization. Uh, next, for the choker, we have the specific choke performance defined by the uh, uh, some uh, network constraints uh, related to the production or processing uh, uh, network or processing facility. Also, we may have uh, some back pressure for other wells on the uh, on the uh, uh, wellhead and so on. For the uh, uh, the production uh, flow line or pipeline, uh, it's a function of the uh, line sizing or line diameter. Also, uh, flow assurance issues like the uh, asphaltine deposition, wax deposition, uh, um, uh, corrosion, and so on. They are also another important factor uh, related to the surface uh, network. For the uh, last part of this network, as you can see, the separator pressure is, an, uh, is a critical factor that controlling the entire production uh, system uh, process. Also, we may have some uh, production limitations for this uh, system. We may have some uh, specific uh, limit of the uh, how much the this separator can handle in terms of the uh, produced oil and the water and so on. Also, a uh, processing uh, facility and processing capacity of uh, the, the production system and the uh, 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 how much water can this system uh, handle. This is another factor controlling the uh, system, uh, the entire production system. So, uh, as uh, mentioned, we have three major parts, uh, the subsurface or the reservoir part, followed by, which means we have uh, reservoir fluid uh, simulation. The uh, second part uh, related to well bore and uh, completion design and uh, production tubing, which means we have a uh, well flow simulation. The, uh, the last part is the uh, network flow simulation controlled by the uh, surface uh, production network and the uh, production constraints and uh, limitations. 
So uh, the complete production system involves the determination of different flow regimes, uh, liquid hold up in the uh, uh, vertical or maybe horizontal uh, uh, lines or horizontal pipes. Also pressure gradient uh, across the uh, production tubing and also uh, the uh, flow assurance parameters like uh, uh, prediction of uh, asphaltene wax, hydrates and scale and so on. So uh, the uh, uh, total production system simply uh, means the determination of total pressure losses across this uh, system. So uh, uh, if we back to this system, as you can see, we have for the reservoir or subsurface part, we have a specific uh, 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 pressure losses across the uh, reservoir or the drawdown, uh, BR minus uh, BWF. Uh, we may have some uh, pressure drop of pressure loss across the uh, combination specifically for high uh, well uh, high skin damage and high uh, uh, mechanical uh, skin and so on and another pressure drop across the uh, production tubing and across the uh, subsurface safety valve uh, also uh, across the uh, choke uh, the uh, well head choke and this uh, flow line or pipelines and or, and uh, finally uh, the uh, other uh, pressure losses based on the components of the production system. So uh, back to the uh, the uh, oil field development uh, life cycle and the operations, we uh, typically have four different stages and four different phases for uh, oil field development process, as you can see. So uh, we have right here a relationship between uh, cash flow and Y axis against the um, uh, time and next action. So the uh, first uh, phase, the exploration phase, which means we have a uh, uh, high investment related to the uh, the uh, um, acquisition of the concession, uh, the seismic uh, acquisition, seismic processing, uh, exploratory trailing, and so on. So the cash flow, as you can see, will be negative. But once we have successful production, so we will start the uh, uh, production. So you will uh, start the second phase, which is the uh, delineation of the appraisal phase or production build up, as you can see. So the uh, cash flow will start to be uh, zero at, uh, at uh, the payout time and increasing gradually um, across the production build up phase. And next step is the uh, development of peak oil production or maximum production. Uh, defined as um, uh, uh, by the uh, maximum oil production can be achieved uh, by the uh, a specific uh, field or specific asset. So uh, the uh, asset um, uh, optimization actually uh, involves the uh, is to extend the development stage as much as we can to achieve the highest cumulative oil as much as we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, achieve. And uh, next phase is the uh, maturity phase uh, defined by this uh, uh, production depletion of uh, reservoir pressure depletion and the production decline. So um, uh, at specific time, uh, we have the uh, uh, the uh, abundance of the uh, feed based on the economic uh, conditions. Uh, so the optimization right here is to extend the um, uh, lifetime of the field as much as we can by optimizing field operations. So uh, to highlight the recovery efficiency of uh, a production system, actually we have several components of the system as mentioned. So um, we have uh, the uh, reservoir model or the subsurface components. Uh, the reservoir model may be uh, analytical or uh, uh, a numerical uh, model. So uh, it's a function of the um, the poor scale efficiency and the uh, sweep efficiency and uh, flood and rock properties. Also the displacement efficiency um, and the reservoir heterogeneity, the uh, vertical to uh, horizontal permeability and so on. Uh, reservoir compartments. This is the uh, related to the uh, reservoir model. For well and uh, surface network model, we have other parameters. Uh, that uh, control the uh, the recovery efficiency of an uh, oil field asset. So we have uh, the uh, physical and commercial constraints may be related to the uh, processing facility and uh, 
the uh, will capabilities and uh, the uh, uh, will lifting system and so on, and also reservoir energy. So all of these uh, parameters are um, affecting the uh, recovery efficiency of uh, a specific oil and gas asset. Uh, also, the uh, it's very important to highlight the uh, importance of uh, the uh, uh, fluid uh, management from the reservoir to uh, the uh, sales or the last point in the production system. So, as you know, uh, the uh, the common uh, um, uh, part or the common parameter between all uh, components of the production system is the reservoir fluid or the uh, 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 produced hydrocarbon. So uh, it's uh, important to define and characterize the uh, fluid uh, uh, properties uh, um, uh, probably uh, by uh, an, a valid BVT model or equation of state uh, model, uh, simply because uh, uh, oil and gas companies sell uh, petroleum fluids and they are not selling uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, rocks or maybe pipes or separators and so on. So the product we have in this industry is the uh, petroleum fluids, maybe oil, gas, or uh, uh, condensate, or mixture or uh, combination of all of these uh, fluids. So as uh, the common part between the uh, uh, production uh, system and the common parameter is the reservoir uh, fluid from the reservoir simulation, uh, well testing, uh, pipe flow simulation, processing, uh, simulation and also uh, reserve estimation and so on. Uh, also related to the uh, fluid management is the flow assurance uh, uh, issues. So flow assurance simply means the uh, is to take the uh, necessary precautions to ensure the deliverability and operability of uh, the of the reservoir fluid from uh, the uh, reservoir to the uh, terminal point. Uh, uh, maybe the uh, separator or uh, transportation pipelines and so on. Uh, several issues actually uh, we have in uh, related to flow assurance like wax precipitation, emulsions in the uh, production uh, tubing or production lines, scales and uh, um, uh, uh, sulfur uh, deposition hydrate formation, also uh, the asphaltine deposition, uh, uh, corrosions and so on. So all of these parameters are related to the uh, flow assurance issues in the production system. So uh, the integrated asset modeling uh, IAM is, uh, as mentioned, we have a reservoir flow, uh, reservoir flow simulation for the subsurface part of the system. As you can see in this 3D uh, representation of the production system, for uh, the uh, wells, uh, we have uh, well flow simulation and then on the surface, we have uh, surface network flow simulation. So uh, the integrated asset modeling is, the, um, is uh, a key element for uh, modeling uh, the, uh, the entire system from the subsurface reservoirs for the, uh, uh, the production wells or maybe injection wells uh, to the uh, surface uh, network and surface processing facility. So uh, this system actually um, uh, is uh, one of the uh, common and uh, important uh, approaches in the oil and gas uh, operations to uh, ensure uh, the mitigation and design of the operational uh, uh, risk and uh, to take the uh, necessary technical collaboration between different segments. So we have subsurface and the reservoir engineers related to this part. Uh, uh, production engineers or uh, uh, the production technology uh, engineers related to uh, well engineering and uh, artificial lift design, also processing and the production uh, engineers uh, 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 related to the surface uh, production and the processing uh, facilities. So as uh, a quick overview between and the comparison between uh, reservoir versus asset modeling. So uh, reservoir modeling, actually, it's uh, uh, we are focusing on the um, reservoir structure, but the physics, the geophysics, BVT, uh, uh, and engineering data, and solve for, as you can see, as the reservoir simulation, solve for pressure and saturation, and the prediction also for uh, uh, the production uh, data and the reservoir properties and so on. But uh, for asset modeling, actually, 
uh, the uh, inputs are production pressures, uh, also BVD data, uh, relative perm, uh, the uh, completion design and surface uh, network. It's a very important uh, input for the asset modeling. And uh, uh, using this data, we will generate uh, the uh, well models, uh, uh, IPR and the VLP models. Uh, also, we can uh, make artificial lift design and optimization and stimulation treatment. And also, we will define uh, surface network uh, uh, modeling and uh, constraints. Uh, the uh, results actually um, may be uh, slightly different because you will link the reservoir and uh, well model to the uh, corresponding surface network. Uh, uh, defined by the network constraints and uh, uh, the uh, uh, capabilities. Also, you will uh, define and determine the state of the system at specific time. Also, you can uh, predict the entire uh, uh, performance of the production system and uh, you, uh, accordingly you can uh, maximize the uh, objective function like uh, uh, maximizing the oil production while uh, 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 considering operational constraints like uh, constraints related to the surface processing facilities and so on. So uh, this is the uh, um, major steps we have is to uh, uh, make the and the model uh, start with the reservoir uh, model or material balance model. Uh, also, uh, we can um, you can incorporate uh, production or injection uh, network to this uh, model. Uh, after defining uh, well models. Uh, next step is to, uh, to define the uh, processing uh, facility. And uh, next you can uh, uh, run different uh, scenarios to, uh, to predict the uh, system performance and optimize the, uh, the uh, system behavior. So uh, well performance or uh, the production performance system, as you can see, we have three major components is to uh, all elements of this uh, system, starting from the uh, reservoir element to uh, completion and uh, production uh, uh, tubing, and then to the surface facilities uh, uh, across the uh, flow line or surface uh, pipelines. So this is the uh, components of the system. We may have some artificial lift system in the uh, uh, across the uh, completion string. So uh, the nodal analysis plot is the uh, uh, one of the widely used uh, techniques to quantify and uh, um, uh, characterize the uh, production gap between the actual and the uh, the uh, current will performance and the current will capabilities. Accordingly, you can. Uh, yeah, you can recommend uh, different operations to uh, optimize the well performance uh, by stimulation operations, hydraulic uh, fracturing uh, to increase the productivity index of your wells, and so on. So uh, the uh, nodal analysis or the integrated production modeling is to uh, consider all the elements of this production system, as you can see. Uh, and the couple uh, uh, and integrate all of them together in a, a single model and uh, uh, optimize the, you can identify the weakest point and you can make a deep bottlenecking of this system to uh, optimize the production. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the common and the clear objective uh, for all gas operators is to maximize production while minimizing the cost. So uh, this is the, can be achieved by uh, uh, integrated production uh, modeling from the uh, subsurface uh, reservoir across the uh, well uh, uh, completion to uh, processing and transportation facilities and so on. So this uh, so production system actually can be uh, very, uh, can be simple or can be uh, very complex considering the uh, subsea, uh, uh, subsea uh, completion. Uh, uh, ultra uh, deep uh, uh, field or ultra deep water applications, uh, uh, long tie back uh, from an offshore fields, unconventional reservoir, and also uh, related other factors related to fluids or uh, the uh, flow assurance uh, issues like uh, uh, wax and asphaltine precipitation. 
So uh, this uh, production system optimization, as you can see, is to uh, uh, consider the uh, mass balance equations and solve for the uh, uh, pressure and temperature drop across the uh, total uh, uh, different elements of this system. Uh, using a specific optimizer, you can identify the optimum uh, operating conditions like uh, the uh, uh, the uh, well headed choke shock size and uh, ASP and artificial lift design and also uh, the optimum separator conditions and so on. So uh, uh, you can um, maximize the production while uh, considering physical constraints of the uh, production system. So uh, the uh, approach assembly, we have three major uh, 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 techniques. The uh, first is the uh, material balance uh, analysis, which is a tank model to uh, considering the uh, production and the pressure data and solve uh, mass balance uh, equations to determine as as you, may, as you know, uh, the uh, uh, how much oil and gas uh, is originally in place or stored and also uh, predict other parameters like uh, driving mechanism, water influx, uh, gas cap size, and so on. Uh, next component is the uh, production system analysis or well modeling is, uh, is to design and uh, optimize the uh, well performance uh, uh, using the uh, 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 integrating the IPR and the PLP model. Uh, this is the uh, well uh, modeling step. Uh, third, third technique is the uh, surface network modeling or surface network analysis. It's uh, it shows a complete uh, production system uh, or maybe uh, production or and injection uh, network modeling will start uh, from the reservoir uh, to the uh, separator to check the capability of the system to handle the produced uh, fluid at different uh, uh, at different uh, operating conditions. So uh, the uh, workflow is the uh, starting with a specific reservoir model or material balance model followed by PVT, uh, which is the uh, data, which is the heart of all, uh, all, all operations actually. PVT um, uh, data must be defined properly. Uh, next is the uh, apply history matching for uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, this material balance or uh, numerical model to uh, predict the future performance and estimate the uh, ultimate uh, recovery. Uh, for well modeling, uh, you can uh, use the uh, well modeling tools uh, uh, to generate uh, uh, valid well models and uh, communicate with the uh, surface uh, uh, network model. And then uh, you can uh, apply several sensitivity analysis to, uh, uh, to define the optimum uh, conditions for the uh, production system. And then uh, this uh, two models, uh, reservoir and one well models can be integrated with uh, a uh, complete production model to get uh, system results. So uh, for uh, material balance as a quick overview, it's simply a relationship between uh, both volume, uh, reservoir pressure and the community production or injection. So as you can see in this uh, uh, subsurface system, we may have some uh, oil uh, uh, oil zone. Um, uh, we may have some water uh, uh, aquifer or uh, maybe water injection uh, uh, operations. And on the top of this uh, oil uh, reservoir, we may have uh, gas cap or maybe uh, gas injection. So uh, the main requirements is the uh, the cumulative production for uh, uh, oil, gas, and water, and the cumulative produced uh, gas oil ratio RV, and also the accurate uh, estimation of the average reservoir pressure across the entire reservoir. And uh, BVT data is also a critical uh, 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 input for uh, material balance uh, models. Also, uh, rock compressibility is another, another uh, uh, parameter uh, defined in the material balance. So, uh, main applications is the estimation of the storage of the gas initially in place, also estimation of uh, the uh, WA or water influx in case of uh, we have uh, some uh, water aquifer. 
and also the gas cap volume, uh, the uh, parameter M. Uh, also, material balance is very useful uh, technique to identify the uh, the active uh, reservoir driving mechanism and also uh, the drive indices. Uh, while material balance analysis, we have uh, um, we can make regression on the, on the most uncertain parameters in the system, like the uh, gas cap volume, uh, the or the size of uh, the initial gas cap M. Uh, also, water M flux uh, is another uh, important uh, uh, parameter uh, uh, or uncertain parameter can be identified by material balance applications. Also, uh, storage can be uh, another uncertain parameter uh, for material balance analysis. Highlighting uh, very quickly the uh, concept of material balance, simply the uh, production uh, of uh, oil, maybe gas, and uh, uh, combination of them will be uh, the expansion of oil and gas initially in place, plus the uh, water influx or uh, maybe uh, water injection, gas injection, and so on. So uh, we have, as you know, we have uh, the general material balance uh, form, which is maybe complex for all of us, uh, but uh, have Lina and Oda, uh, introduced what we call the uh, simplified or linearized uh, form of the material balance equation defined by this form. So uh, simply on the right hand and left hand side, we have the production with the F capital, the production of uh, different uh, pieces of oil, water, gas, in a reservoir barrel, as you can see. So this is the uh, production term uh, of this uh, straight line equation. On the right hand side, we have the expansion term in a reservoir uh, 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 barrel, but stock tank uh, barrel, as you can see. Uh, this is the expansion of oil and uh, uh, the uh, dissolved gas, which is EO, EFW, which is expansion of uh, water. Uh, and uh, uh, poor species, and EG is the expansion of the figures in the system defined by these uh, three equations. So the generalized equation, as you can see, is defined by this form. So you can uh, set this form uh, as a straight line equation based on the uh, reservoir uh, uh, driving mechanism and uh, reservoir energy. As an application of this straight line form, we have what we call a Campbell Diagnostic Plot. It's a very important material balance tool, which is the uh, graphical tool in uh, material balance application. So you can use this uh, uh, plot, uh, plotting F over ET, which is the uh, total uh, expansion against F. So this can be a diagnostic plot to identify the, uh, the reservoir driving uh, mechanism. So uh, based on this uh, horizontal line on the base case for uh, the uh, depletion uh, reservoir or solution gas drive system. And uh, this behavior for weak aquifer, so we have uh, an increase in F over 18 Y axis against, uh, as you can see, and followed by such uh, drop in this uh, relationship. Uh, the uh, moderate uh, water drive or moderate water influx defined by this model in the red line, red curve. And uh, for strong water aquifer, strong water drive, this is we have continuous uh, uh, increase in, in these uh, in the Campbell diagnostic plot, as you can see. So uh, material balance workflow is uh, um, as mentioned in uh, material balance uh, uh, modeling, uh, the every reservoir will be defined as tank model. So uh, you need to, uh, the main inputs, as mentioned, are the pressure and the production uh, data. So um, we get, we have to have the uh, monthly production uh, data and the equivalent or corresponding average reservoir pressure after uh, uh, defining the model inputs and uh, BVD uh, parameters. Uh, you can generate uh, your uh, tank model, uh, link this tank to uh, the uh, corresponding BVT model. And by uh, 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 importing the uh, production and uh, pressure uh, data and also transmissibility, we can make uh, uh, history matching to uh, match the production history and history uh, simulation to uh, fine tune your model. And the, uh, then next step, you can make prediction 
and optimization for the uh, field of visions. Actually, uh, even the material balance is the one of the uh, the powerful visible engineering or petroleum engineering tools. We have some limitations of uh, the material balance. Actually, uh, material balance will not um, uh, um, uh, define the uh, long-term uh, uh, production focus related to uh, gas, oil, fish, or water cut. Um, specifically, in, in case we have unaccurate um, BVT data. Uh, also, uh, the uh, geometrical distribution of uh, the uh, reservoir is not defined by material balance because, like the reservoir simulation, as you can see, because a material balance simply is a, a tank model or zero dimensional model, which means uh, we will uh, uh, consider an average uh, averaging of all reservoir uh, properties across this uh, tank model. Uh, so uh, the uh, position and geometry of uh, uh, wells is not is actually is not defined in the material balance. So material balance can say we have to have uh, we have to drill, let's say seven wells in this uh, field to uh, apply uh, to uh, achieve the uh, production target, but uh, it will never uh, tell you well uh, where you can uh, plot your uh, we can drill your wells. This is the uh, one of the uh, uh, limitation for material balance. Uh, in this uh, case study, we have this is the production history for this field. We have uh, uh, visible pressure against the cumulative oil and the cumulative uh, water production. So for this case, for this field, we have a start of water production at this uh, time at um, at uh, 2000 at the uh, middle of 2000, uh, 2002. And we have such continuous increase in water production, as you can see, and the continuous drop in the average uh, reservoir uh, pressure, and this is the cumulative uh, oil production. Uh, relative mobility is an, uh, an important uh, factor, uh, an important input for uh, material balance uh, uh, predictions to uh, define the uh, uh, relative movement of different phases against phase saturation, as you can see. We have uh, KRW uh, against uh, uh, water saturation and KRO against the, the uh, water saturation in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, other direction. So uh, the results of the, this model, as you can see, um, uh, before defining any aquifer uh, model. So if you look at the uh, Campbell plot, as you can see, it's uh, Uh, in Campbell plot, let's uh, zoom in this in this plot. So uh, in Campbell plot, we have uh, a relationship between F minus WA or uh, water influx uh, over ED uh, versus F. So uh, as long as we have this behavior of uh, the uh, of uh, this relationship, which is continuous increase on this relationship, means we have. Uh, a specific uh, pressure support from an aquifer. So um, uh, defining this uh, analytical model uh, as an ambition drive is not correct because we have to add uh, a water uh, source and uh, energy uh, additional energy source to match this uh, uh, historical uh, data. So the model, as you can see in the blue color, is not matching the, uh, the uh, uh, historical uh, data. So uh, this is the, uh, uh, also we have uh, right here the energy plot, which shows, uh, shows the, con uh, the relative contribution for different energy sources for uh, this case. And this is the uh, analytical uh, method or analytical plot, which means we have the uh, reservoir pressure against the cumulative uh, production. Uh, graphical uh, method, which is a diagnostic plot, in terms of the straight line forms of the material balance equation. So uh, by uh, um, revisiting and this model, we can define an external uh, uh, water source or uh, water aquifer to match the uh, data. So um, uh, we can uh, define an aquifer model for this uh, uh, material balance model to, uh, uh, to match the pressure behavior. 
So um, um, we have this plot or dimension, this water influx plot, uh, this uh, to define what are uh, influx and what are aquifer parameters. And then uh, the, this is the updated energy plot, as you can see. So uh, uh, if you back, if you highlight this plot, as you can see, we have the uh, water influx in this color shows the uh, major contribution in terms of the reservoir of energy and uh, followed by the uh, flood expansion and also big uh, volume combustibility is this is the uh, minor energy source for this uh, system. Um, for the uh, uh, after matching the data, you can find the uh, uh, the estimate of the oil uh, originally in place, which is the um, estimated as uh, 186 million stock tank uh, barrel. And this is the defined aquifer uh, model, which is the house development uh, modified uh, and um, using uh, radial aquifer. And uh, this is the aquifer parameters. So uh, this is the, uh, fine, uh, the final matching of the model after fine tuning. This is the uh, comparison between this is the uh, uh, model uh, without uh, aquifer uh, influx in the red color. And this is the model was in the blue color, uh, which is uh, typically matching the uh, the uh, historical data. So uh, next step is to apply production simulation is to uh, uh, is to predict the uh, uh, the uh, pressure from the flow rates and check uh, the the fine tune your analytical uh, model. So this is the uh, the model is typically uh, matching the uh, historical data as you can see. Before prediction, you have to uh, apply what we call the uh, uh, fractional flow matching or FW uh, matching to uh, based on the uh, defined uh, and based on the uh, imported production history. Uh, accordingly, you can uh, you can update your uh, relative mobility data based on the actual production. This is what we call FW uh, matching is to uh, match the uh, uh, to modify and fine tune the relative mobility curve to uh, match the historical uh, production. Uh, for uh, production application, uh, this is the uh, predicting the reservoir of, uh, pressure without developing uh, 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 any new wells. So this is the uh, the uh, prediction results as you can see. So we can. Um, uh, we can, um, uh, as you can see, we can see the visible uh, pressure can uh, only support the production for a few years, as you can see for this, uh, for this uh, table. So in this table, we have uh, this the uh, time against the uh, uh, tank pressure or visible pressure versus oil rate. So uh, this is the uh, uh, defined oil rate or oil rate constraint is, uh, is 10,000 barrels per day. So uh, this uh, pressure without any uh, additional constraints, uh, as you can see, uh, to achieve this uh, constant flow rate, the uh, reservoir pressure will drop dramatically across uh, uh, starting from 2006 up to 2000. Um, uh, 2013, we have a uh, uh, high drop in the average uh, reservoir pressure. Uh, also, you can make prediction of uh, flow rate and uh, pressure based on specific uh, well models. So you can define the IPR model and uh, VLB model, and accordingly you can uh, uh, predict the uh, reservoir uh, performance in terms of the uh, tank uh, pressure and the uh, the uh, in this relationship we have uh, water cut. Uh, increase in in uh, as the average uh, reservoir data. Uh, also, we can make prediction based on uh, um, uh, prediction to uh, identify a specific uh, the number of wells required to achieve a target oil rate. Simply, uh, let's say we have target oil rate as you can see, which is sixteen thousand barrels per day. Uh, we need to identify how much well, how many wells we need to. Uh, to dwell in this reservoir to achieve this target based on the uh, well uh, models. 
So uh, using a material balance actually can uh, predict how many wells we need to, uh, to dwell to uh, achieve the uh, production target, which is the uh, uh, 16,000 bar per day, this is the target oil rated. So uh, you can, this is the number of uh, producers uh, required against time. So uh, at uh, uh, 2010, we have to dwell uh, about uh, six wells to achieve this production. Uh, target uh, for this field. Uh, now, uh, an overview of the uh, nodal analysis. As you can see, this is the uh, this relationship is very common in uh, petroleum engineering applications. It's uh, uh, um, uh, related to uh, 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 analyzing and optimizing the production uh, system. So uh, simply, it covers the uh, reservoir capability to produce fluid, which is the uh, the uh, inflow performance relationship IBR, and also uh, the well bore model or well model to, uh, uh, which is related to the well and the completion capability to uh, uh, to transfer and uh, transmit fluids from the bottom of the well to the uh, uh, to the surface, including the uh, surface uh, uh, network constraints. So um, uh, in nodal analysis, as the name implies, actually we have uh, uh, specific uh, uh, locations or nodes in the production system. And for every node, we can solve the uh, mass balance equations uh, to, uh, to uh, predict the system performance. So in this, uh, uh, in this plot, as you can see, we have several IPR models at different values of, uh, of a scan. Maybe uh, we have uh, uh, stimulation operation. This is the uh, IPR before hydraulic fracturing. We have skin, uh, a positive skin of 10 and uh, zero skin with the uh, hydraulic fracturing operation or stimulation. And for uh, VLB uh, uh, or outflow performance curves, we have two different, uh, maybe in this case, we have uh, ESP design. And based on how many stages in, in this SP, we can find different uh, uh, outflow performance model. So uh, using nodal analysis, it uh, uh, can be used to uh, identify the system bottlenecks accordingly can optimize the uh, system performance. So uh, nodal analysis, as mentioned, is to uh, to analyze the entire production uh, system and identify the capability of, of the uh, system uh, at, um, and diagnose the system problems or bottlenecks. So we have, as mentioned, um, as the two major uh, models, the inflow performance or uh, uh, IPR and the outflow performance or VLB. And uh, at specific uh, point, uh, we have the uh, operating conditions uh, uh, if we have a uh, bottom of node right here, so we have, uh, as mentioned, we have average reservoir pressure and the BWF right here. If we consider the uh, solution node is at the uh, bottom of the well, so uh, this is the uh, uh, node parameters, which means uh, bottom of pressure against uh, flow rate. So uh, the uh, production of uh, pressure losses in the uh, production system, as you can see, uh, simply we have three major uh, parts, uh, reservoir part, uh, uh, production uh, uh, or uh, production tubing or completion and the surface network. So uh, the uh, uh, starting with the average reservoir pressure to um, the uh, pressure just before the uh, the uh, completion or sand phase. And then we have bottom all flowing pressure. Uh, right here we have the wellhead pressure at the wellhead and separator pressure. So we have pressure losses uh, maybe in the reservoir due to uh, the drawdown and the reservoir, uh, 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 reservoir uh, properties and uh, also the production rates. The uh, also pressure uh, losses across the completion, and also the pressure losses across the production tubing, as you can see, and also uh, losses across the flow line on total 
So the total pressure losses in the system will be uh, BR averages for pressure minus uh, separate of uh, pressure. Uh, this difference will be the total pressure losses in the production system. So uh, nodal analysis, uh, as mentioned, is to consider um, uh, all elements of the uh, production system, as you can see, from the reservoir to uh, separator and, uh, and uh, storage tanks. So we have uh, the inflow and uh, uh, vertical lift or outflow performance. Um, the intersection will be the operating point of the, of the system at specific separator pressure. Uh, a specific gas liquid uh, ratio and also well head pressure. So uh, let's uh, um, highlight the uh, uh, pressure losses or pressure drops throughout the uh, total production system. So if you uh, starting with the uh, uh, reservoir point or uh, we have average reservoir pressure right here. So uh, the uh, uh, delta B across the uh, reservoir uh, will be, um, we have, uh, we will have BWF right here. And another uh, delta B across the uh, uh, completion. So we have bottom of long uh, pressure. This is the uh, total, uh, this is the total pressure loss or total pressure drop across the uh, uh, reservoir. And then we have another pressure losses across the tubing and surface uh, facility or surface uh, network. So uh, the pressure loss across the production tubing and uh, uh, choke, uh, well, uh, well headed choke, and also the uh, flow line or production line. And finally, we have the downstream as the uh, separator pressure. So if you uh, consider the solution node, so a nodal analysis simply we will define a specific node in the uh, production system and solve the uh, mass balance uh, uh, equation and the, uh, uh, solve for the pressure losses across this uh, system at the uh, solution node. So let's say we have a, a node right here at the bottom uh, hole pressure. Uh, so the upstream of the node will be uh, the reservoir, which means the uh, inflow performance relationship. So we can uh, assume a specific uh, rate, and we already have the average uh, reservoir pressure. So you can calculate the pressure loss across the uh, completion BWS, and then we have uh, BWF. So uh, next, uh, on uh, if we consider the solution node at the uh, bottom of long pressure, so the downstream of the system of uh, of the uh, will be the uh, 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 the production tubing and surface uh, uh, flow line and also the uh, separator uh, pressure. So this is the uh, inflow performance curve. And this is the outflow performance curve, and the intersection will be the operating point of this system. So uh, the system plot, uh, if we uh, have a bottom hole node, uh, this is the, um, at first we have the M flow to define uh, the relationship between bottom hole flow and pressure and the flow rate for the reservoir. And the outflow, it's a, a simple uh, relation between uh, bottom of flowing pressure and flow rate, but for the uh, well bore. And the intersection will be uh, this operating point. We have a, a certain uh, flowing pressure and uh, certain uh, flow rate. So uh, the uh, boundary conditions and, uh, and solution node for the reservoir uh, this is the uh, average reservoir pressure, and this is the bottom of flow pressure, and this is the pressure profile of the pressure uh, losses or pressure drop across the uh, reservoir, which is affected by the reservoir purposes and also the uh, completion efficiency and uh, 
the do we have the stimulation or do we have hydraulic fracturing and so on? So uh, this is the uh, uh, solution. Not so the upstream will be uh, the uh, reservoir pressure and downstream will be the uh, separator uh, pressure. So uh, plotting the inflow performance relationship for this reservoir, we have different points against the uh, uh, BW operable flow and pressure against the flow rate. So we have this typical uh, relation or typical behavior of the uh, IPR model. But for the uh, tubing and the flow line, the, uh, the uh, uh, vertical lift uh, performance of the outflow curve will be uh, uh, considering this uh, behavior, as you can see, at a certain or at specific gas liquid ratio and at specific separator uh, pressure. This is the, in that case, it's very important to highlight the pressure losses in the system as a function of the uh, uh, um, uh, the pressure loss due to friction across the uh, completion on tubing uh, production tubing uh, pressure loss due to gravity uh, due to the gravity of the uh, uh, well pour um, uh, well pour fluid column and the pressure loss due to acceleration this is another uh, factor uh, another component in the total pressure loss. So a uh, system or nodal plot, as you can see, um, this is the, uh, we have uh, uh, inflow or the IPR uh, model, outflow or VLP model, and the intersection will be the operating point. But if we have some uh, transient, so as you can see, even at the same average uh, reservoir pressure, so uh, the uh, achieved or the, uh, uh, the uh, maximum flow rate will be uh, less than expected due to the transient effects, as you can see right here. So uh, the applications of uh, nodal analysis actually is to uh, to check and to uh, um, to identify the system performance at different conditions. Let's say we have. Uh, we need to predict the uh, IPR model at different reservoir pressures uh, to uh, uh, highlight the reservoir pressure depletion. So uh, this is the shape of IPR at uh, at uh, uh, six thousand psi and this one at four thousand psi. Similarly, for the uh, outflow uh, curve, uh, we may apply several sensitivity uh, analysis to uh, define the uh, system uh, parameters. So uh, well modeling is very important to uh, predict the well performance at different conditions. As you can see, uh, at the same uh, IPR model, we can generate uh, different uh, VLP or outflow models at uh, different conditions. And you can uh, accordingly uh, uh, use and design the optimum uh, completion strength uh, also, uh, uh, the uh, the optimization and designing of the artificial lift. So as you can see, we have just an ESB uh, ESB pumping curve, and uh, you can uh, make uh, designing and optimizing of this artificial lift system using the uh, the uh, uh, valid well models. Also, uh, you can check uh, the uh, the completion uh, performance and the completion efficiency and uh, uh, stimulation operations like uh, the hydraulic fracturing, the uh, acid stimulation, and so on. Uh, a very important uh, application for uh, uh, well modeling is to generate uh, lift curves for uh, reservoir uh, simulation or and also for uh, production network uh, models and so on. Uh, this is an example of the uh, impact of uh, the uh, water cut on the production, as you can see. Uh, so increasing the water cut will, uh, will lead to uh, the uh, reduction in the uh, flow rate. And we have three different scenarios of uh, the uh, well head. Uh, for this one, we have uh, uh, the uh, uh, highest well head pressure, which is 750 psi gauge. And this one, we have the lowest uh, well head pressure. 
So uh, this is the uh, effect of uh, pressure and uh, the uh, the uh, the water cut. Uh, also, you can check uh, the and uh, evaluate well performance after uh, fracturing operations. So this is the uh, um, for the same as you can see for the same uh, uh, VLP model. You can uh, uh, investigate and you can evaluate the uh, the um, uh, the uh, uh, reliability of the hydraulic fracturing uh, uh, operations to uh, generate uh, the uh, IPR. Uh, model before fracturing and after hydraulic uh, fracturing or acid fracturing operations. So uh, as you can see, we have uh, a significant increase in the productivity index of the well, and we can achieve uh, much high uh, uh, production uh, rate. We have increased in flow rate about 6,000 bar per day uh, relative to uh, the base case with hydraulic uh, fracturing. And uh, at the slightly higher uh, bottom holds longer pressure. Similarly, we can uh, evaluate the acid stimulation uh, treatment uh, and its effect on the well performance using this uh, 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 well modeling uh, before and after stimulation uh, operations. Uh, also, we can uh, model emulsions or flow assurance parameter uh, by generating the uh, pressure uh, gradient. As you can see, it's a, for this relationship, we have pressure against the bottom wall, uh, um, uh, the uh, uh, MD or, or TVD bottom wall depths. And this is the uh, pressure gradient of water cut is zero, which means we have no emulsion in the model in this case, uh, because uh, there is no water in the production system. But if we have uh, uh, scenarios of uh, water cut is uh, 25%, uh, this will be the uh, difference uh, between the uh, base case and uh, the case of 25% uh, uh, water cut. And this is the case of 50% water cut and this one we have uh, 75 percent water cut so as you can see uh, as long as we have increase in the uh, water cut you will have a high difference between the uh, two cases actually due to the emulsion viscosity uh, uh, is increasing with the uh, 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 increasing the water cut uh, the uh, last approach will be highlighted in this session is the surface uh, network modeling. Uh, simply, uh, you will define all network and production system components, including the, uh, uh, the flow line uh, manifolds, uh, separator conditions, and wellhead. Uh, uh, we have uh, well models, reservoir models, and so on. So you can construct a surface uh, network model to uh, by linking a reservoir tank model and uh, well models and you can define a specific constraint uh, uh, like uh, the uh, maximum oil production or maybe a maximum water cut or maximum water for uh, processing uh, uh, cap uh, capacity and so on uh, so uh, we need to generate uh, IPR and the PLP curves, and um, the next step is to um, simulate, uh, uh, is to uh, make history matching and uh, simulation and prediction. So uh, let's say we have this case, we have a specific offshore field of uh, two reservoirs, the reservoir A, uh, uh, we have three wells for this reservoir connected at this manifold, uh, manifold A. A reservoir B, we have uh, um, another three wells uh, uh, connected to this reservoir, and uh, we have uh, the production uh, uh, from reservoir A to this manifold, and this uh, we have this uh, pipeline or flow line uh, from uh, uh, the manifold A to uh, manifold uh, B and then to a single flow line to the uh, <clears throat> the uh, surface uh, network. So um, 
the uh, we have uh, uh, start of production for Reservoir in 2003, while for this one is 2008. <clears throat> and uh, for every reservoir, we have three different uh, uh, wells with uh, different uh, well models. Uh, so you can, um, and in between we have uh, this uh, pipeline between manifold A and manifold B. And from manifold B to the um, the uh, processing facility. So the uh, constraints in this system, uh, as you can see, is is to set the reservoir uh, the uh, uh, separate of pressure as two thousand uh, two hundred psi gauge, and also uh, we have some uh, limitations. of the uh, liquid uh, processing uh, capacity of the production system at uh, 20,000 barrel per day. This is the constraints we have in this production system to consider while system optimization. So uh, definition of the production system is starting with the uh, reservoir is to define the reservoir, which is the uh, tank model with a specific stoip and uh, certain reservoir energy sources. Uh, next step is to define uh, wells, which is the connections between the reservoir and the uh, surface uh, defined with uh, a specific uh, IPR and BLP models. So uh, third step is to uh, define the joints or nodes in the uh, system. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, production manifold or any connections between two different uh, pipelines and so on. The uh, last component and uh, the end of the production chain is the uh, uh, the separator defined as specific separator uh, conditions controlling the entire system. And uh, after terminals of the separation uh, separator, we can. Uh, direct this oil for uh, oil uh, transportation and maybe uh, uh, refining and finally to the end uh, user and the final uh, uh, petroleum products uh, as we uh, have in our daily life. So uh, we have a case study right here. Uh, we have different uh, uh, objectives for this system uh, analysis. We will highlight them in next few slides. So uh, in this uh, system, as you can see, um, which is already highlighted, we have reservoir A connected with three wells, uh, uh, well 1A, 2A, and 3A. For every well, we have uh, a specific IBR and VLP models. And this is the manifold A connected to uh, manifold uh, B. And uh, for manifold B, the uh, two uh, uh, reservoirs will be uh, uh, merged together in a single pipeline to the uh, this separator. So, and this is the uh, reservoir B. We have uh, another three wells, wells uh, 1B, 2B, and 3B. So, uh, simply uh, for every uh, reservoir, you will define the M uh, material balance or uh, the tank model. And for every well, you will define IPR and VLP models. And uh, then you will define the uh, network parameters. This is the uh, uh, VLP uh, models for uh, wells must be uh, defined before system analysis. Uh, so uh, the uh, um, what we need to know is is to uh, estimate and predict the system performance if all wells are considered as fully open. So this is the uh, system results as the uh, separation using the uh, by solving the network and defining only we have only one constraint is the is to set the separate pressure as two thousand. Uh, or uh, 200 BSI gauge, this is the constraint we have in this uh, system. So there is no constraints applied, uh, otherwise the uh, separate of pressure 200 uh, BSI. That means uh, the uh, model uh, will run without any optimization options 
and any uh, constraints and any controls. Uh, that means the uh, uh, the model will predict the well performance uh, if the well head pressure, which is uh, zero psi gauge, which is the which is not uh, applicable in the uh, oil and gas operations. So now we will assign a specific maximum liquid um, uh, constraint, uh, which means solving the network with optimization by defining two constraints. The first one is the separate of pressure 200 psi gauge and uh, maximum liquid uh, um, capacity in the system is 2000, is 20,000 uh, barrel per day. This is the constraints applied so uh, you can uh, uh, solve the network and uh, predict the um, the uh, production parameters we will have in as you can see in this model and in this uh, network so uh, if you look at uh, the detailed results of this model so uh, just three minutes to end this uh, session uh, the uh, reservoir A is we have high uh, water cut. So uh, the uh, second uh, scenario will be applied right here is to apply uh, prediction for uh, um, the uh, uh, the wells. As you can see, uh, well, uh, 1A and 2A show the um, stop of uh, production at after six years of uh, uh, production. Uh, when this is the in uh, reservoir A due to the drop of uh, reservoir pressure below the uh, bubble point pressure after one year of production, this is the uh, the uh, reservoir pressure of uh, reservoir A and the uh, red color. So uh, even uh, we have another drop in uh, the uh, reservoir pressure for uh, reservoir B, but it's uh, still higher than the bubble point pressure. So uh, the next step is to apply uh, uh, system detection uh, using the pressure support by water injection. So uh, you can um, to eliminate more drop in uh, reservoir air pressure below the uh, bubble point pressure accordingly can optimize the production. So you can set uh, target pressure for this uh, reservoir, let's say, uh, this uh, value to keep the reservoir pressure higher than the uh, bubble point pressure by injecting the uh, required water volume to keep this pressure constant at the, sp at the specified value. So uh, the uh, results by uh, taking this step uh, is to uh, introducing a pressure support by water injection operations. This is the comparison between system results uh, in terms of the cumulative oil production between the two cases, the, we have a significant increase in the cumulative oil production between the uh, base case and the uh, case of the uh, water injection. And this is the, uh, the um, uh, reservoir uh, pressure against the reservoir pressure is maintained constant, as you can see, while the, we have um, uh, injecting water in this uh, uh, reservoir. So uh, based on the injected water volume, we can design a specific um, uh, water injection uh, network to this field to, uh, to start uh, uh, injection operation to maintain the average reservoir pressure. That's all I have in this session. Thank you so much for joining us. And